this is Pat's Two Cents, reminding you that God's into love. And we are dealing with Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful, or shall I say, worry and fret. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me had flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to abase, how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. A lot of times we hear in preachers and prophets talk about how when we get into the Lord, there is abundance, there's prosperity, there, there is no lack, there is no need, there is no doing without. That's a lie. I hate to say it, but it's a lie. When you look at the word, and he says, verse 12, I know both how to be abased. That means how to be on the, down and, and out. And I know how to abound. That means you're flourishing. Everything you touch is prospering. Everywhere in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry. Yes, born again Christians will deal with lack. Born again Christians will suffer loss. Born again Christians will have issues because we are in this fallen world. And there are things that happen to us as well. If you go out in the rain, being a born again Christian does not keep you dry. If you go out and you lose your wallet. Being a born again Christian does not mean that you don't lose your money and it doesn't get stolen. So that's why we must pray because God can intervene and take the sting out of those issues and either replace the money or make sure that somebody honest picks up your wallet and returns it completely with all the contents intact. But it doesn't always happen that way. So when you go through changes in your life and you see that things are not lining up according to the way you've been taught down through the years, yes, there is a certain level of immunity from sickness according to Psalms 91. None, none of these diseases will come near thy dwelling. The plague will not come near you. No evil shall befall you. But bad things happen to everybody. So don't be shocked. Don't be dismayed. Don't lose faith in God because the elements of the world has kicked you in the teeth. Know that there will be times in your life where we, you will be at an all-time high. Seasons of blessings, blessings galore. God's precious promises unfolding in your life miraculously. And then there will be times of struggle. 
That's part of why we're on the face of this earth. It's a proving area. It's like the boot camp that separates the real from the surreal, that separates the wheat from the chaff. Why? Because God wants us to follow him after a willing heart, not because we have to. He wants us to, to obey him out of love, not out of obligation. And the only way to find out how committed we are is to live in a very imperfect environment. Now, before you get all bent out of shape because you can't pay your light bill, before you get all bent out of shape, because this is coming against you or somebody hit your brand new car before you get bent out of shape. You hear what I'm saying? Understand. That's why the Bible says, acknowledge him in all our ways and he will direct our paths. There are times that, that bad things happen, not because you're cursed, not because the devil's after your tail, not because you committed a sin and you're paying a penalty for it. But sometimes bad things happen because God tried to make us think of something. We didn't, we thought of it and we dismissed it or we didn't give it any credence. We didn't pray on it. We didn't pay attention. And as a result, something bad happened that the thought God put in our head was put there to avoid. So God makes our life easier on us. And that's why he says, acknowledge him in all our ways. Have you ever put a, uh, I've done this many times. You ever put something down, you walk away and you have a second thought. Maybe I better put that in a different location. And you say, okay, I got to go do this. I'll go move that in a minute. And you don't. And you go do something else and you come back and in the middle of what you're doing, bam, you knock it over. Why? It was in a precarious position. God tried to caution you, move it in a place where you won't knock it over. You will forget it's there and you'll knock it over. Or you'll move something on the table and it'll bump against it and it'll fall on the floor and get broken. There are times when God will give you what we call a second thought. When you get that second thought, pay attention. There are many things we suffer in this world because we're not paying attention to the quiet warnings that God puts in us. He's not warning us, oh, there's going to be a big explosion Run into the shelter. He deals with the little things in life that we consider insignificant just to make our lives easy on us. Can you imagine a great big God being bothered with little insignificant things like that, little minuscule situations. Some people have done little things like broke something, swept up the floor, mopped the floor, thought everything was cool, and then go and walk on it barefooted, get a piece of cup or glass in their foot. All of that could have been avoided if they heard that second thought, if they heeded to it. And now they got to go to the hospital because after a week, their foot is swollen. They don't know what's going on. Turns out something's embedded in their foot. They've got diabetes and now they're fighting to keep their foot or their leg because gangrene is setting in. I mean, the little things, it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. And we're not paying attention. Our lives can be a lot harder than it needs to be. Knowing we're in this fallen world, we need to consult with him on everything. We need to consult with the saints, consult with each other. I talked to Lynn. I talked to Marlene. I talked to Roseanne. I talked to Rashad. I talked to Andrea. I talked to my friend Pat. I talked to Edie. I talked to a number of people and I bounced things off. Because I know me. I know that I'm emotional. I know I'm compulsive. I know I'm impulsive. 
And when I get excited about something, it feels like it's all God. For example, I had planned to catch a train and I was going to go to Ohio. Was it Ohio? Illinois, Illinois. To look at a car and test drive it because it was the only one in the country I could find that was within my price range. And what a, a number of my friends say, and that includes all, I mean, I'm talking church members, friends, family. It was a consensus. Don't you think God can bring a car right here in, in your own city? Why would he make you have to travel all the way across the country to find something you can afford? You see what I mean? We can make things harder on ourselves. Now, what if I had been insistent and went on that trip and made a way to get that car, forced it to happen, drove that car cross country and got in a big accident and can't walk anymore? Am I going to get mad at God? Mm, who's to blame on that one? I didn't do a sin. That wasn't a sin. No. But the Bible says there is safety in the multitude of counselors. So if you're not sure you're hearing from God, you talk to your friends. I talked to my friend Renee. Renee got on my nerves, telling me how I don't need to get into debt. But I wanted the car and I wanted to refi my house. But I talked to her because I know she's got good business sense, better than mine. And even though everything in my emotions said, but I want it, I want it, I can do this, I can do this. I didn't do it. I listened to good counsel. I know when somebody's got more sense than I do. And I tell the Lord all the time, I don't trust me. My heart is deceitfully wicked. That's the case with all of us. And sometimes because of our heart, with all the good intentions, baby, you know the old adage, the road to hell, that's not in the Bible. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Well, when I look at that expression, I look at the road to hell on earth is paved with good intentions. I know a young man. I don't know why I'm on this. I know a young man who was in his 20s when he went with his friend swimming in the ocean, born again Christian, child of the most high king. Did he ask the Lord if he should go that day? That's a question. See, we don't know those things. And most people don't tell it because they don't even remember if they did or not. Did he ask the Lord, number one? Number two, when he went swimming and he had a wonderful time and he got all good and dry, he didn't need nothing in him wanted to get back in the water. And everybody was egging him, oh, come on, we're all getting back in. So instead of him just swimming, he decides to join the group, the crowd, and he jumps off the rocks and dives in. Bam! That's the end of his youth. He's alive. But I wouldn't want to live in that situation. He was totally a quadriplegic. He couldn't even lift his hand or scratch his nose. Now he's dependent for the rest of his life. Why? Was that because he committed a sin? No. That was a good intention. He was going to have fun. But did he ask God if he should get back in? Did he get a funny feeling when he got on the rocks before he jumped off? See, a lot of times we get warnings we ignore. When I get a warning and I heed it, life is so much easier. When I don't heed the warning, I pay a consequence. See, God leads and guides you. 
And sometimes you think you're being paranoid. Sometimes you think you're being overly scary. You're being overly cautious. Right. You're being overly leery. You need to believe in people. No, you need to believe in God. So no matter how nice, no matter how sweet people are being, if you get a second thought, pay attention, double check, go back and double check, retrace your steps and see what detail you need to zero in on. That one little minor detail could save you a big headache. Now, right now, I'm in the middle of a transaction that has not been completed yet. The car is right here in my city. It's only $1,600. The mileage is barely over 100,000 miles. The car is in good shape. But there's one thing that the Lord put in my mind to double check. And I'm going to double check. Two things, actually. And before I move forward, I'm going to double check to make sure. Mm-hmm. And if those things don't line up, guess what? Mama Seat is not going to buy that car. See, we have to make sure. We have to make sure. See, that car could be God's way of saying, yeah, it can happen just this easy. But I got something better. We don't know. And it may be the car. But I'm going to consult with God every step of the way because I'm too old to put myself in precarious positions. Will you be patient enough? As bad as, I mean, I want it so bad I can taste it, but I got to keep me in check. Are you going to keep yourself in check when life presents opportunities that in your mind has got to be God? What are you going to do? You going to jump in head first? And suffer the consequences for the rest of your years or your life or the rest of the, of the century. I mean, everything in your life is affected by this one decision you made. Or are you going to sit back and say, wait a minute. God is never in a hurry. He will give me the time to investigate. I do not have to jump head first like the man did in the ocean and can no longer move his hands or his feet. He's got, to, he's got to eat out of a straw. Think about it, you guys. Verse 5, I think, to verse 9. Okay. Let your conversation be without covetousness. See, that's why we can't covet. We can desire, we can want, we can long for. But it's covetousness when you do whatever it takes to get it. And be content. Be content, y'all, with such things as ye had. For he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. And he will help you if you receive it, if you ask for it. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forevermore. Be not carried about with divers, strange, divers and strange doctrines. Divers is another word for different, a variety of doctrines. In other words, you, you think this way one minute, you think that way the next, you, you believe for this one minute, you believe, yeah. Be not carried about. It's like somebody, you ever hear the expression, somebody pulling you around by the nose? Same expression. Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats. Mm, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. Stuff, things, materialism, got to have it. Uh, gimme, 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 my name is Jimmy. No, you're not supposed to be led about by your appetite, but by the Spirit of God, which will keep you safe in all things. I don't know 
this is a weird word. Mm, mm, mm. Listen, you guys. A lot of times when we walk with the Lord, because we've been taught, we've heard the traditional message, the prosperity hype. You have to remember, you're not going to have all things at all times. It's just not going to happen. It's not about doubt. It's not uh, raining on your parade. Life rains on us, whether we like it or not. It's what we do all in the interim, in the little moments, in the little seconds that are right there in our face that will either create a, a monster for us to, or a giant hurdle for us to have to get around or get over, or that will create a little hump where God is just making it easy and he'll even send the transportation to get us over it. It's, it's what we do with our decisions, with our with our attitudes, is how we handle life and its challenges that determine how hard or how easy our life can be. Now, there are some things that are out of your control. They are an attack from the devil. God can heal you from all of it. But there are some things we have to live through. Oh, we have to live through some things. And if we suffer loss because of it, we have no one to blame but ourselves if we're the ones that made the choice to cause that ball to move it. So we have to ask God every step of the way, even if I'm making an unwise decision, God, cover me in the blood of Jesus, protect me. Because I'm not trying to make my life hard on myself. But if I missed you, protect me from the bad decision I made. If I missed you and the timing's wrong and it shouldn't have been done this way or it shouldn't have been done on this day, cover me in Jesus' name. Protect me from me. God's merciful. But you have to, you have to withdraw from the account that he set up for you. And his account has got mercy. His account has got divine protection. His account has got wisdom. His account has got the blood of Jesus to cover us from the onslaught of the enemy. But we must pull on it. Not just go along our way, doing our thing our way because we grown, we three times seven. No, you cannot depend on your own. That's why the Bible says, lean not to your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. When I'm not sure if I made the right decision, I'm begging God to cover me. Because I know what could happen. I beg God to, to cover me because I know I'm not the wisest kid on the block. Sometimes I'm the dumb diddy dum dum on the block. And I ask God to extend his mercy towards me as if I were an idiot. Because I'm not trying to sin. I'm not trying to go against his will. But sometimes I think it's his will. And I want to make sure that I'm not walking in an erroneous lane where I can put myself in danger. God protect me even if I'm wrong, because I don't know. I really think I'm right. I really think I'm hearing from you. But the heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? So I'm constantly consulting with God because I don't trust me. Do you trust you? Or do you trust God? Do you trust your desires or do you trust God's will? Which means you may have to wait. You may have to do without. Hmm. You may have to return some things. It may not be this week, but next week. It may not be this man, but that man. It may not be this lady, but that lady. That lady might not look as good as this lady looks. Oh, hello. Hello, y'all, young man. 
Hello, young lovers, whoever you are. You got to be careful. There are some of you that will go for the okie doke because you want a man, a piece of man, any kind of man in your life. And this one is knocking at your door. And you're going to jump in head first like the man who's a, who's a paraplegic right now. You got to be very careful about the choices you make in this life. I'm feeling so stirred. I'm wondering, is this word for you or for me? Honestly, I'm feeling so stirred right now. Because I am too old to want to pay consequences when I'm not even committing a sin. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, there's a person that blessed me tremendously. If I find out that this car ain't it, I'm going to refund that money in a New York minute. Yeah, I'm going to hurry up and do that. I'm not going to put that money in a precarious position where something could happen and their money's gone. No, I will refund it. If Monday doesn't pan out like I think, if it doesn't turn out like I hope, like I'd like it to, that money is going to be refunded Monday. Do you see what I'm saying? And there's another lady too that blessed me and I'll refund hers too. And I'll just tell them I'll wait till I know I've heard from God. I'm not going to put anybody else's stuff in a bad position either. And no need in leaving it sitting there. Anything could happen. Somebody can go and hack your account, take money. They can do whatever. No, this is not my money. This is for a blessing from God. And if God ain't in the blessing, the money don't need to be in my account, period. So you got to pray and watch over everything, every decision you make. Some of y'all are eyeballing a guy right now. Hands off, baby. Don't go there. Don't cross the threshold or it's your behind. Some of you are eyeballing, looking up and down on this chick and all the measurements and all the goodies are in the right place. She is well equipped, baby, to satisfy your every need. And God is saying, hands off. You better back up, buddy. I remember God gave me a, a prophecy one time for a young man told me to tell it wasn't I didn't know who the man was it was a group of men and it was an overcomers meeting and God get I don't know why I'm on this and God gave me a warning to tell all the men because I didn't know who the word was for had no clue and the word was this okay God is saying that somebody in this group it has a friend the friend is nice. The friend is cute. And you find that the friend is attracted to you and you are attracted to her. But God is saying this. You need to cut the friendship off completely, no matter how nice she is. Because it will lead you to a point where the whole thing will explode in your face. And when it explodes in your face, it will affect the next 25 years of your life, and it will ruin all chances of you ever reconciling with your family, and it will damage your kids. I mean, it was just so, whoa, you will pay penalties for 25 years. The meeting ended, we prayed, we hugged, see you guys later. I'm getting my stuff together, getting ready to go home. Everybody's gone. I'm, I'm getting up, walking to my car, and one of the guys comes back, and he says, uh, is it okay if I talk to you for a minute? Yeah, sure. He says, I just wanted you to know I want to wait till everybody was gone. He said, that word was for me. And I said, okay. He said, I have a friend, and we like each other. And it is a friendship. It hasn't gone anywhere. But he said, I, I was considering, and so was she. 
And he said, but I really want my wife back and I want my sons. I want all, all of us to be together. And she already has an issue with trusting me because I messed up in the past and I don't want to blow my chance. I said, okay. So we prayed about it. Next thing you know, I would say it was never discussed again. I never asked him how things were going. I stayed out of it. That's between him and God. About 10, 12 years later, my husband and I were at a restaurant, ran into the couple. He was with his wife, totally reconciled with the family. He, his wife, and his sons. Everything was well with him. And I said, look at God. See, your decisions, following that covetousness, your appetites, those yearnings of the flesh can be your downfall for life. Jumping in head first, hitting your head up against the rock instead of you standing on the rock consulting with God can make the decision for the rest of your life. Will you miss your destiny because you had to have what you got to have right now? Pray. Pray before you jump, baby. You hear me? Seek before you leap. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave you with that. God bless you. I'm not only preaching to you, I'm preaching to me. Yeah, because I'm in a, in a valley of decision right now. God bless you.